Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Dave Kelly, and today I get that wonderful opportunity of interviewing and talking with Gaylene Simpson. Now, Gaylene has recently finished the P90 Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Program. This has been done for both the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast for James Swanick and also for Dave Kelly for the Manship Project Podcast. So we're going to jump straight into it. And as I said, I had a great opportunity for three months. Every week I got to speak to Gaylene about her progress in the phenomenal decision she made, which was to stop drinking alcohol for 90 days and then just see what benefits came out of that and then consider, does she want to keep that up for the rest of her life or maybe it was just a 90-day thing. So you are looking fantastic, Gaylene, I've got to say. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I definitely um, feel fantastic. Feeling fantastic. Yeah, well, you're, I don't know, I mean, in in so many different ways, you look look fantastic and... um, I know you're sitting over there in New Zealand and it's starting to get uh, coming into the winter, but um, from what you were telling me when we when we talked each week, you'd really been able to up-level, lift lift your life up in, in so many different ways, health, relationships, your own happiness and things like that. So apart from not drinking alcohol, what other things have changed in your life over the, the period of doing the program? I think some of the big benefits were uh, like, I was always into exercising and running and my running for instance I've taken eight minutes off my 4k run which is huge um the weight loss like you don't realize even the puffiness that you get from drinking and that's not everyday drinking that's just social drinking weekend drinking um and how the extra weight loss just creeps on as well so during the program without even trying because we all no, Dave, I ended up with a bit of a chocolate addiction there for a little while and so I came off the sugar. Um, But even during the program, I lost 13 centimetres off my waist, so which is massive. Wow. And that wasn't even trying, and that was just giving up the sugar and the alcohol. Wow. Do you think it was a combination of stopping the calories from the alcohol as well as using that time that you might have been sitting around drinking, not being very active, and then going out and doing more active things? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, And also the sleep, like sleep was a big thing. Um, You know, they always say sleep uh, is a really good benefit um, to everything in your life, you know, exercise better, think better, you're more clear. Mm. But the sleep piece for me was huge. Um, Mm. I don't think, I never ever slept during the night. I'd wake up two or three times and because of might have been stressed, something happened at work. Mm. We're now, yeah, I love going to bed because I sleep. And I have great quality sleep. And I actually wake up in the morning and bounce out of bed. Wow. That's amazing. Um, what about time? I mean, obviously, a lot of us, when we were drinking, um, and I've been alcohol-free now for two years, every now and then I might have a drink just to, you know, in a certain social context. But generally speaking, I find that it does not add anything to my life. And I know we've talked about, you know, this this whole way we grew up learning to think about drinking alcohol, it's just almost like, it's all it's part of us from a kid and we just roll on with our life expecting that we will drink alcohol just like all the tv ads and the printed ads tell us is what adults do um but it amounts to a whole lot of time doesn't it and so you've got all this extra time on your hands now and and since you started the program what's that done for the quality time with your family you know with your son and your husband well it's definitely i guess when you are spending time with them, it's more quality because you're present and mm. you're just so much more organised in the evenings and in the weekends. So you, mm. you plan your weekends around, you know, and you actually get out and do stuff. Instead of talking about it, you take action. Mm. So there's mm. been lots of things happen around the house um, and lots of things personally and as a family we're actually planning and doing more of now. That's kind of... Um... It was that did that surprise you all those benefits that came out of it, or was it like you were just hoping you'd get the chance to be able to let those things develop more in your family life? I I guess I would I sort of thought well definitely was going to be some benefit, especially for doing it for 90 days, because yeah. 90 days is a really long time. But yeah. once I sort of got into the program, the 90 days went quite quickly. But I love Sunday mornings. I love getting up now on a Sunday morning and mm. I never used to run over 10Ks and now I can get up on a Sunday morning and go for a 10K run and what better way to start a Sunday morning? Mm. No hangover, clear-headed, 
even if I do end up going out in the evening and having a late night, I'm still, I'm waking up, I'm still resting, I'm still having good sleep and getting on with my Sunday and doing all those fun things that I actually enjoy that I used to think about. Okay, so what would a Sunday morning in the past have been like? Well, I guess it sort of depends if we went out. I probably um, definitely would have overindulged and drunk too much wine. Um, and and then I would have been laying in bed till 9 o'clock, having cooked breakfast, um, you know, and then slowly getting into some of the jobs if we'd been out the night before. So and now it's all about go out the night before, but I can still jump out of bed and go for a run, do those jobs. And actually have some, you know, quality me time as well as family mm. time, which is really important. Mm -hmm. That was the next thing I was going to get onto was uh, a lot more time on your hands for family, for just, you know, doing things. But also how's your relationship with yourself? Is that, is that a thing to really ask? You know, has your relationship with yourself improved by virtue of the fact that you've been a bit clearer in your mind? Yeah, totally. And I think that's, I don't know, I was sort of brought up to, there was one thing about the program was you actually had to talk about your feelings because yeah. I guess with the marketing and alcohol and, you know, this is how you celebrate, you have a wine, you have a bad day at work, go home and have a wine, it'll be okay, you know what I mean? And I think as you get older, sometimes that wine could turn to two and, mm -hmm then, of course, you're not so clear-headed and you're quite tired. So, um, yeah, totally. When I think about my relationship with myself is I'm more confident in making decisions because I'm mm -hmm. clear. And also, I guess it's you learn to accept who you are, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it sounds like the investment in time in your or having the time but also putting that time towards yourself and your family and other things fitness etc jobs around the house the investment in that time has yielded a pretty great return oh yeah I definitely got more out of the program than I thought so much more yeah so Gaylene um what was the final straw to make you change because I think from memory um you'd thought about this type of making a decision like this but you know, it, it, at the time, I know, I know that it was like a massive decision. And I, I remember talking to you and you were, there was a few situations at work maybe or other social situations coming up. And you were a little bit nervous about how you should handle it because normally you rock into these situations, uh, maybe not so much work, but social situations. And what's the, what's the uh, status quo? Well, everyone's standing there with a drink and they're drinking and all of a sudden you're coming in. Yeah, I'd fix you a drink. No, no thanks. Well, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then it leads to all this inquiry. But I know there was a few times initially that you were a bit anxious. And it was, is that true? Take us back to what those what that transition was like. I sort of, um, I guess I joined the program because there was a couple of reasons and behind it. I'd been following James and it was more about, I guess, we're brought up in a culture where alcohol is quite accepting and it comes part of your lifestyle, you know, barbecues in New Zealand, you know, go to the rugby, have a beer, um, you know, get your job, celebrate, let's have bubbles. Um, and it's a huge culture here in New Zealand. And I I sort of, I don't know, I came after New Year's and was like, actually, I don't want to be part of this. I actually want to find out more about what James is about mm. and what this 90-day challenge is because mm. by reading the reviews, it was you could tell that, okay, it was about, it was focused on people stopping drinking for 90 days. It was um, more about the entrepreneurs. And, but there was more to it. And I wanted to be part of that. Mm. So, social situations, the first couple were a little bit hairy, um, but I was fortunate enough. Um, my husband said, well, if you're going to do it, I'm going to do it too. So, he oh, wow. came on the journey with me. Yeah. So, he was on the journey for 90 days, wasn't on the program with me. But uh, but even he noticed um, lots of changes even in himself. So mm. the first couple of social situations was quite interesting because mm. we've always been ones to drink and turn mm. up not drinking. People mm. were like, wow, that's pretty cool. Wow. But then, you know, going back and seeing them 60 days later, they're like, 
you're still not drinking. Mm. And we're like, no, we're not. And we're choosing not to. And we're actually, you know, finding this quite good. And then the people would start talking, wow, I wish I could do that. And, mm-hmm. you know, you become an inspiration to other people. Mm-hmm. So, so that's quite nice, really. Oh, yeah, wonderful. So do you think that there's a lot of people think about this because of the, the you know, the Sunday morning after Sunday morning after Sunday morning getting up thinking, oh, my Lord, I feel crook. I want to be sick or I just feel so rotten. And then you go and have this maybe a you know, massive breakfast to try and help over and get over that. Um, do you think there's a lot of people thinking, God, I wish I could break out of this, this, this box somehow? Like, have you found that in your family and friends just from their level of interest in you doing this? I don't think anyone's ever admitted it to me, but I guess now that I'm on the other side and I'm still choosing not to drink, um, I think you sort of people start to look at you and think, well, actually you're looking really good. And they start to actually question, what have you been doing? Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember you and me, Dave, talked about this and it was only right at the end of the program. And I was mm. like, oh, my goodness, this whole program is not about the alcohol. Mm. It's actually about all the feelings that you feel mm. and you'd use alcohol to numb and not all feelings but some feelings yet but the issue is that you still have those feelings Mm. after you've numbed with alcohol be it one glass two glasses of wine a bottle whatever so and I remember we talked about this and it was only at about 87 days I recognized that Mm. and it was Mm -hmm. it was actually learning to deal with all the emotions that come up Mm. and finding ways of coping in a Mm. different way Mm. and sometimes that is actually just sitting and doing nothing. Wow. Yeah. I remember vividly when you we were talking on that particular day and you said, David, it's not about the alcohol. It's not about the alcohol. It's about whatever it is in our life that we're using to avoid feeling those feelings of, you know, things like not feeling good enough, not feeling loved, feeling underappreciated, all these things, these negative, horrible feelings which pop up and how when, when those things come up, what do we do? How do we deal with them? Well, one way that's socially acceptable is to grab a drink and that's what we've been doing, you know, most of us since most, you know, most people in, the, in our countries, um, maybe since the age of 16. That's how I numb out of it and, and sort of zone out of it, get rid of it. And it was so cool to hear you see that because I thought she's got it. Man, she has got this. And this is a lesson that is so deep in your experience that um, that's really, that's what transformation is all about, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And I think for me, a lot of it was stress. But the funny thing is, is now that I don't drink, I don't get as stressed. And if I do, I find a way to work through it because I go to the core and go, well, actually, what has caused this stress? Mm -hmm. What do I need to do to change? that mm. so you know you sort of things would bottle but now it's like you go well actually that's what's caused it do I need to worry about that what can I do to change that what mm. needs to be done or actually not nah, let's just detach the trailer here and move on and forget about it mm. and so yeah the my stress levels are way way down I must admit I'm so much more relaxed and it's really? probably the most I've felt relaxed in, I don't know, probably 15 years. Really. Wow. That's phenomenal. Was that, were, they, were they benefits, revelations, like changes which you weren't even thinking might come? Oh, I had no idea that would happen. Like, and I guess I sort of gave up coffee at the same time because I was, you know, I always talk about liver loading, drinking coffee, caffeine in the morning and liver loading with wine. You know what I mean? Those sorts mm-hmm. of things. So I gave up both at the same time. Well, I gave up coffee a little bit beforehand. And, you know, you'd get, I don't know, some people get heart palpitations if you drink too much coffee and things. Mm. And so I sort of gave up both of them. I've sort of gone back to drinking a little bit. I have one coffee a day now, real coffee, Mm -hmm. because Mm. I actually enjoy coffee. Mm. But, um, yeah, and it was a perfect time to go, right, okay, let's actually have a really good detox here. Mm Mm-hmm. It sounds to me generally like you are empowered 
you feel, you look, you sound like this empowered woman who's able to choose. Well, I have a coffee now. I don't have six. I have, I cho- I'm choosing <clears throat> strategically what you want to occur in your life. Is that something that's, that's, uh, that's apparent to me? Is that how you're feeling, more confident generally in life? Yeah, I definitely, Dave. And I think also when I make decisions now, I'm making a conscious decision, not an unconscious decision. Mm-hmm. So, and it's even when it comes to food, you sort of go, well, it's very similar, isn't it? Like, do I, you know, you go to go for the chocolate biscuit and then it's like, and half the time you make an unconscious decision and you're already eating it before you actually realise mm-hmm. what you've done. Mm-hmm. So, I've actually learned to make conscious decisions. So if mm. I go to eat something now, I think, actually, do I need that? Is mm. that going to be a benefit to me? Actually, no, I'm better off having something, a carrot or an apple or something more healthy. So it has taught me to make more conscious decisions, mm. which, have, you know, prior to that, I was walking around making unconscious decisions all the time because I was just, yeah, that's yeah. how... You did things. And that's how you drank alcohol is an unconscious decision. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you I think we do a lot of things, don't we, that are unconscious. It's from our it's how we're it, it's you know, we've got a we've got a consciousness about us which is a certain way, but we're not actually sure how that started like that and where the origins of those things were. But I think science would tell us and um the research would say that a lot of the decisions of who we are that uh, of our concept of who we are, are uh, formed somewhere between zero and eight. And, you know, so things like advertising, parent, parental income, social status and uh, environment that you're in, uh, location in the world, all these sorts of things, their cultural experiences, all have inputs as to how we are. But in the end of it, we end up just being this unconscious being who's going through life, not really taking command. And uh, the thing I'm really impressed about with you, Galen, is that you just seem like you are definitely in the seat of decision in your life, and uh, it's wonderful. I'm sure that um, I'm sure that those around you, work colleagues, family, ex- uh, are really noticing those changes. And um, yeah, definitely, my son, he's just like, oh, you're not so tired anymore, Mum. And mm. you know, I guess yeah, alcohol makes you tired. Yeah. Didn't realise how much it can make you tired. Even if it is only that weekend binge or, you know, you go out on a Saturday night and drink too much and have a late night. Yeah. Um, you know, it was one of his comments is, oh, mum, you're not so tired anymore, mm-hmm. which is huge How do you coming feel, from a child. How do you feel in relation to your son being his mum and him now looking at you as, as this new version of yourself someone who's choosing not to drink and seeing all these benefits. Like, did, what does that do for you thinking about how, the image that you're presenting to your son? I, for me, it's probably the biggest gift I can give him is actually being able to, one, show him that, you know, you can be happy and have fun and still be a great person without alcohol. Mm. And I'm not saying that I won't drink again in the future, but at least when if I do, it will be a conscious decision. Mm. And also, I guess being able to give him from what I've learned from this program about, you know, feelings and talking about things and actually being vulnerable and having the courage, uh, that's something I can pass on to him. Which wow. And show him that just because there's the advertising out there that you need to drink or, you know, because it is every everywhere that actually that is advertising and that's what it's there for but it's actually not the right journey to go on yeah right amazing to think that your your way of being now towards your son the way you've just described that um could show him that there's another way to be as a young guy growing up in our cultures that otherwise he would have just probably gone down the same path you'd gone down without really even being conscious, but all of a sudden he finds himself drinking. Now he's, he's looking at you saying, okay, all these people are doing that, but here's my mum over here who stopped that flow of energy, that sort of that, that lifestyle, and now I look at her benefits. And you might, what, what, a powerful, what a powerful sort of example of the fact that you just don't need to be like the, the crowd and you don't need to, you can actually take some control. 
I can imagine that just feels really wonderful given that your son's only ever going to have one mum, isn't he? And, you know, you're, you're showing up as a great example of what it is to be a free human being. Yeah, that's right. And, um, and I think also just being having the courage to go, actually, I, I want to change and this is how I'm going to do it. And I think we there's one thing I did learn from the program is because, of course, we're on group calls and things together is people don't talk about their feelings and we did on this journey and there was, you know, we learned from each other. But it's okay to be vulnerable. And it's okay to talk about the really raw stuff because that's, I guess, that's what keeps us healthy. That's mm-hmm. what keeps us motivated to learn and to grow and, you know, and to change. But we've actually got to talk about some of that stuff as well. Mm-hmm. So that's where the program was fantastic because we had the support of other people on it and right. also the coaches like yourself, Dave. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that for a bit because. It's hard to really quantify uh, the benefit that comes from having a group of people with that are, that have got a, the similar objective, and they're going, they're doing something that's different. It can be challenging. It can be scary as hell to go and do these things. But when you've got the support of a bunch of other people, maybe we're all crazy together. I don't know, but if we are, it's a good crazy. But we head off in this direction, and we've got this wonderful support. You've got instead of one guru's perspective on the way things are and and downloading that whole uh, view of the world, you've got all of a sudden you've got 10, you've got 15, you've got five different opinions, different experiences. It's so empowering, isn't it, that that group having that community? Yeah. So, yeah, and it was my, I must admit, I've made some really neat friends over in Mm. America and even in Australia from being on this journey and I still keep in touch with them now. And somebody would have something come up and completely, I guess, uh, the going back to the feelings thing, something would happen and they'd post it and say, oh, I really wouldn't mind going and having a beer and going to the pub. Mm. But then everyone would fire in and give help and support that person on what actually was the root cause of that. So whatever happened at work or and give them ways of learning to deal with it in a different way. So mm-hmm. you were learning from it, from people every day, even if you weren't posting. Mm-hmm. So, and just having that community support mm-hmm. and being there and watching other people's journey was just, yeah, definitely mm-hmm. amazing, really. That's awesome. So, look, let's 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 role play this for a second because um, you know one of the great things about James's Project Ninety uh, program is the fact that this community exists. You're not just there by yourself. Now, as soon as you know that there's someone standing with you going through the same sorts of things, that gives us incredible sense of power. But say, for, okay, let's role play. So I'm I'm on the call and I'm I'm in the Project Ninety group and I'm thinking, oh, geez, I've had a horrible week, and I just feel it's Friday. I just feel like I want to go and have a few drinks at the surf club with my mates that I used to do and before I started this program. I just had enough. I just want to check out. It's just too much. Now, give me a, give me five responses of different p- people within the community that would fire back to encourage me to kind of snap me out of it. What would what would those what would a few comments be? So, for instance, you could reach out to Marco Polo. So you could say, "Hey, look," because of the group, and just say, "Look, this is what I'm thinking," and then people would jump on and, I guess give you full support and give you other ideas and ways of dealing with it. You could reach out to them one-on-one so you could actually send the person a message um, or they could reach out to a coach Mm -hmm. or they could reach out to James or the other option is, which we always used to say, was just go and do something else but Mm -hmm. that. (laughs) Okay. So anything else but, yeah. So So, um, um, there was always... So I'm in that situation and I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed and if I'm if I, I realize oh hang on well hang on I've got I've got 40 I've got 80 people as part of the community I can go on I can uh, send a direct message to one of these people I'm becoming friends with I could send a Marco Polo video clip and say hey guys I'm just I just need a bit of help here because 
I'm feeling like I want to do something that I don't really want to do because I know it's not going to end in the right way. What can I do? And then, so give me some responses, for example, like you and others might jump on to help me see things in a more healthy way. What might you say to me if I was thinking that? Yeah, so the first thing I'd say is congratulations for reaching out to us um, and and then just talk about, I guess, how, you know, how you must be feeling at the moment and quite often, I guess, if I didn't, somebody else would have said, well, actually, hey, that's happened to me and this is what I did. For instance, I drove, drove home and went for a walk for an hour Mm. or I actually called such and such. So mm. maybe you could try that instead. Wow. But sometimes, generally when people were quite close, if they posted, then everyone would get on there and start posting and then mm. they'd start listening to that post and that would actually pull them down and they would go and do something else and mm-hmm. then you'd hear from them later. And Because generally it's... It, it does oh, pass okay. and pass. the thought comes into your mind. You think, oh... You know, my Friday night, come home, I used to have a wine and that Mm -hmm. was the first thing I did on a Friday night was walked in and poured a wine and sat down. Mm -hmm. Now it's I walk in, pour myself a big soda and drink that and do something else. Mm -hmm. Quite often it's throw a load of washing on or I actually sit on the couch and start a conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, oh, God, it was only a couple of Fridays ago. I came home and actually went for a run. So... Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's unheard of on a Friday night. Well, mm. in my world, probably for the last mm. 20 years. But, yeah, and I think that's that whole thing of, yeah, people, the community would help and support mm-hmm. in any situation. The yeah. biggest step was the person to actually say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's really something, isn't there, and just having the, the luxury of time between the thing that happens here and making a decision if we can just space that time out and then sit back and reflect on hey is this real is this going to go and i know where this is going if i drink now for example i know where this is going to end up i'm going to end up feeling that i've just let myself down and i might feel that i might end up feeling sick the next day etc but putting that space and it really helps when you've got other people you realize you're not just on this journey alone and we're not this we're not not on this journey in life alone You know, so what I really want to say is to anyone who's listening, <clears throat> excuse me, on James's podcast, the uh, Alcohol Free Lifestyle podcast, there is a community here. It's real. It's not made up. It's not fabricated. You will see many, many colleagues, friends heading in the same direction, wanting to up level their life, just like what Gaylene's done. You know, Gaylene, it's not easy at all to make change. You're talking about coming home. You're a woman who's had a lot of experience in life in work commercially you've got a son you've got a vibrant relationship um and you come home on a friday night and did something you've never done before which is go for a run now the changes you've brought in your life that i've noticed uh these do not happen easily at all and they often do not happen without the without one-on-one direct interest and in, uh, from someone who you know cares and having a community around that supports you and also having really good content, really good ways and learning new strategies to think about these things. All that stuff's provided in James, James's program. Like I'm here to give this uh, James's program an absolute big plug and that's for my podcast listeners as well. You know, we, I run a manship uh, mastermind group and we're building the same culture of, number one, you're not alone. You might think you're alone on this new venture to change and make positive impact on yourself and, and on the world. But you're not alone. You've got the opportunity to hook in with a whole bunch of other people and it really can't be understated. So thank you for that. Um, hey, one of the things I wanted to, to just elaborate again on, you'd said earlier, was it's not about the alcohol, you know, and I just want to tease that out a little bit further. <clears throat> give, can you give me an example of where in the past, oh, no, can you give me an example of the way you dealt with the situation where say it was a say for example it was something that happened at work during the working week, and you used to deal with it by just thinking. Oh, far out. And you told me this example, so it's not made up that you would just have a couple of drinks to try and forget about that or decompress. If that same situation came up, come up now, how would you look at 
that realizing that actually alcohol is not going to be the solution. How would you decompress it yourself? And just just for the benefit of going over this again, to to have to feel free in making what the decision is going to be as to how you deal with that particular stress. What would be the first thing you'd do? Yeah. I'm putting you in the hot seat, and I'm sorry for that. Oh. Please, everyone recognise that I'm asking Gaylene some things yeah. that we haven't even discussed, but this is how real it is. I think probably, well, now, Dave, uh, being that I'm clear-headed and I'm quite clear in decisions and I guess I haven't got that brain fog and everything else that comes with it and I've got good sleep and I exercise and I'm eating well. If some of those situations came, well, came up now, I would actually just hit them head on because in the past I'd probably, I guess, not say anything or but then come home and show on it and have a drink and be quite angry or pissed off about it really mm-hmm. but now it's like I actually I'd I'd speak up and say actually what you've said isn't okay and I'm not happy about that and we need to talk about that mm-hmm. so instead of just letting I guess some the more important things slide under the carpet until mm-hmm. I stewed about it for a week and then approached it mm-hmm. now it's like no actually let's deal with this right now on the spot let's actually talk about this mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Hey, do you think in some ways, Gaylene, the ability, you know, in using whatever strategy it is to to, to uh, avoid an, an emotional or a confrontational situation, alcohol is one way. You could you could become a gym addict. You could become a Netflix binger, for example. Whatever those things are, do you think that, that we're really dealing with the problem at that point, or is it we're just pushing it back for some time, back in the we're sort of pushing it into our future, really, because at some time we're going to probably face that situation again. Do you think that's what's going on? Yeah, that's right. I think, um, you know, like quite easily I could have given up alcohol and gone to food or to something else, but it's, I guess it's just pushing the emotion that needed needs to be dealt with or anything that comes up in life. You're just pushing it to something else like you say Netflix or food Mm -hmm. and I think with going through this program it gives you the skills to actually dive like I said earlier dive into those emotions and Mm -hmm. actually I guess hit life head on and actually go right okay well that's happened I have to deal with it so Mm -hmm. but also learning when something does happen to actually step back a little bit too and go well okay so What's actually happened here, Mm. what I think, what I'm thinking might be completely different to what the other person is thinking too. Mm -hmm. So actually learn to understand, have a bit of understanding in between as well. And, you know, I guess asking more questions so you Mm -hmm. understand Mm -hmm. instead of just jumping to conclusions. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, you've uh, taken... You know, probably what I feel, uh, Gaylene, what I the way I describe it for myself to other people is I say stopping alcohol was the first decision and it led to a whole bunch of other really good decisions. And um, it sounds to me yeah. like you've talked about your health, you've talked about your relationships, you've talked about, you know, the actual getting off of alcohol itself. Uh, you're looking you're looking wonderful and you're you're sounding wonderful that you've are really in the uh you know in an empowered position. Uh, for the way you're viewing your life going forwards. And um, what else could you want for someone in your life more than that? That they're feeling strong and powerful and clear about what they're doing. And they can, it's it's an, it's an equipment, it's skilling up for a life that can just expand and grow, isn't it? Yeah. And let alone the money you save and... I remember doing a calculation at some point on the amount of calories, empty calories I hadn't drunk, and I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. no burning them off at the gym because I haven't got them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, yeah, and just the money, like, that's massive. I've started putting that aside. Of course, the program being in New Zealand wasn't cheap, Um, and I guess there is that financial buy-in, so to keep you accountable as well. But, I yeah, that was worth every cent. Yeah, worth every cent. So in terms of a, a um, and without you know, necessarily talking about money figures as such, how long do you think this will, will you pay the uh, course fees off by not drinking, just the money you're going to save? In, is it one year? Is it 10 months? Is it? 
I, yeah, I think it was just under, it was about 16 months. Okay. Yeah. Of course, we've so, had and, and yeah. dealt with, um, and I know James, uh, through the history of the program, have dealt with people who were spending insane amounts of money and, you know, they paid the, the equivalent uh, fee fee was paid off in six weeks. <laughs> it's extraordinary. And you think about dynamics which often happen uh, when you're drinking because not just necessarily your alcohol. You could be a generous person who's at the bar and shout is always the one who's shouting and buying and um those, you know, money and lost money in that sense really adds up quickly. Hey, Gaylene, um, it's been it's really been a pleasure getting to know you. Um, you're a genuine you're a genuine article. Uh, you know, none of none of what I felt that you you have always extremely authentic in the way that you showed up on our calls each week. And it was just so wonderful to see someone who was battling at times and struggling, and also willing to be open and honest to me that, hey, this isn't going 100% and I'm a bit nervous. And But often when we talked about those things, just having that gap and that space and all the resources available through people and the videos James posts, et cetera, all that stuff just helps to really change your whole psychology about, hey, yeah, I'm worth, I'm worth living the best life I can possibly live and I don't see how alcohol is going to put me in that position. And I've seen, I've seen an amazing transformation. I talk about you, Gaylene to other people all the time. I say I've been uh, speaking to these people for three months and I see this transformation. They have changed their life and in a number of ways, not just, not just the one item of alcohol that we're talking about now, but you've changed and transformed your life, the benefit to you and your, your next circle out, which would be your husband and your son, and then the next circle out from that could be other family members and friends, and then you've got work colleagues out then it just goes on and on. It's like a ripple in a pond, isn't it? And I'm just really proud of you and um, uh, just think that you, you're going to just continue to move forward. I know you are with your, you know, things in, in terms of your professional life. It's opened up as well, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah, it has. So, Gaylene, um, listen, I think we might uh, bring the call to an end. Um Wonderful. Thank you for taking the time out over there in New Zealand. I'm sitting over here in Turkey and um, we're, we're connected by this wonderful technology. So um, thank you. And I'm sure this is going to be great for you to be able to show to your friends and, and family about the reasons and the motivations and, and, and more importantly, the outcomes. After 90 days, you've really turned your life around and, you know, you should be so super proud of yourself uh, as you've done that. And I know you are. Thank you, Dave. It's yeah. been awesome. It's been such a great journey. Wonderful. Okay, Galen. Well, we'll see you soon and um, we'll keep talking and uh, bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.